Thank you, Team Alar. And now we will open the floor to four questions. Let's see, any questions from the floor? If you don't have, I do have. Any questions from the floor? Okay. Okay, let me start with um, internationally displaced eight. Okay, the first group. Um, so reflecting on your experience, so you're the first group, okay, reflecting on your own experience. You could have been a volunteer, a youth volunteer from the community who can do these things, um, or a nurse in a hospital who can train first aid or something like that. What did this program uh, or in what ways did this program makes uh, you better prepared and what are the things that prepared you? Uh, what kind of features that prepared you to do a better plan to respond in emergency situations uh, using the initiatives that you employed? So the question is why we are like special in our work. How did the uh, civic engagement program prepare you better in terms of planning what you do compared to, you can do that. You can be a nurse and do CPR and things like that, but how did Mr. Shibley and the team prepare you better? What are the features in that program? Uh, I see. Uh, something very important about our uh, project is that it's personal experience. So that was the base of our project. However, with the help of the civic engagement uh, department, we were able to uh, first do our uh, thorough research. Uh, as uh, Mr. Rabia mentioned, it's not like just a local problem. However, it's uh, international and global problem. So the first thing you wanna do is do some research. Uh, the second step is uh, to have field work. So you go and, and do some uh, field assessment uh, to see what kind of problems you want to solve and what are like practical solutions to the problem. Then um, with the help of Karen, we were able to be uh, to connect to uh, uh, professional people uh, such as Solange, uh, psychologist specialized in art therapy. So uh, we get hand on hand um, understanding of how to deal with certain issues. Uh, so this is how... Uh, civic engagement department help us in our project. So I can say it's experience, personal ex uh, It's personal experience, research. Research, uh, engaging, planning, connecting, communicating, consulting. Isn't this a scholarship activist, Mr. Provost? <laughs> this is what makes, I mean, a program different from any voluntary or volunteer kind of engagement sure, sure. outside. Thank you. My question is to the Yemen group now. Okay. Thank you, Nohat. Sorry. You were all uh, wonderful. Enjoyed very much. Very genuine, uh, very meaningful and impactful. Uh, to the project in Yemen, I. Uh, I love the idea. My question is, how did how would you? There are many funding platforms out there. How would you establish confidence and trust in your project so that you can, in a sense, compete in a positive way and attract the support that you need to realize the various projects that you have included? Because these are very critical in terms of money transactions and confidence and transparency are key. How do you plan to achieve that? Uh, great. So thank you for your question. So in terms of uh, like uh, how we're going to uh, transform the trust of the people on us as a uh, Bina uh, team, as you can see that we are a diverse team within Yemen itself. So me and Rassan, he wasn't here uh, today, he couldn't make it. We're from North Yemen. So we're tackling this part of Yemen. Tasbih and Hussein from South Yemen. And they have the exposure within their own uh, cities with their, their own people so given that we can possibly establish this platform and like a, a like a general point of view that targets 
all Yemen and then separate hubs in which, for example, I can administrate the one in Hajja, Hussein can go for Adan for Hadramaut, Tasbih and Adan and Ghassan and Sana'a. We believe that um, given the, the, the flow that I explained within the slide of like how the proposals are going to be uh, sent to the platform, how we're going to review them, how we're going to make sure that everything is on spot. And we also believe that previously uh, initiatives that came up from the MEPI uh, program, such as Siraj. Siraj was a program that would empower the volunteers uh, that would empower the youth in Yemen to volunteer for the civic engagement. So for example, how we were planning to do that is for example, I live in a city in Yemen uh, that's near, not like in the downtown, it's a bit far, and I have several schools that are next to me, okay? So building from there, I can enter this platform, I can go to these schools, visually as someone from Yemen, with like look into what's the damage that's there, take some pictures, send them to like a specific team that we're going to form, make a proposal, send it to the platform, the platform reviews it. They see how it makes sense. We evaluate with partnerships, of course. We're not building this upon us only. We're new, we're high, like graduates from AUB. Yes, AUB is a very good institution, but we know that it's not enough for us only. That's why we came up with like, join our team. We need more people. We need more volunteers to actually make this more impactful. So moving from the proposals and how we can review them well, partnerships with good construction uh, partners within Yemen who can like help us evaluate the costs and how we're going to implement them. And finally, showcasing the results so you can actually see this $1 that you paid, this $10 that you paid, contribute in this window, for example. This contributed into this wall, this board, this technology. And not only... We're trying to go for the education infrastructure. We're going beyond this. So different sectors will be tackled. Maybe work as, as I mentioned, the capacity building within the community is one of our major goals. So having good professionals, good uh, people who we can trust in the future is one of our main uh, goals as well. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So we move to Wamin Al-Farahi Maqatal. Okay. And my question to you, uh, we know the area where you did your project has a lot of issues and problems. And uh, through the theater that you are trying to create so that you can make people aware or the, the generation to come aware of what is happening and decide on their own, how do you plan to spread that knowing that uh, there was a Masrah um, Tajribi uh, in Tripoli to bring the two conflicting areas together. How do you want to invest later on? Suppose you graduated and you left AUB. What would you do? Would you drop the idea? Would you pursue it? And how? Okay, so uh, stable it's, is really different than any other problem that is prevalent in Lebanon, in the region, in the world in general. Uh, stable it is a culture. It is uh, something that is it. It's embedded in the people. Uh, like uh, and you when when you go to uh, Bedawi to North Lebanon uh, to this region, uh, you can't find anyone in the neighborhood that has not been affected by this stable. It anyone when I uh, arrived to Beirut uh, three years ago. Uh, I was surprised you know, how uh, stables are not present here in Beirut. It is, it is a shock, really, I, I mean it. Because uh, this is how people celebrate, this is how people interact uh, with each other. As we said, it is a form of masculinity, this is uh, of proudness. Uh, this is the culture of stables uh, in, uh, in general. Uh, so uh, the second question, why we are uh, you know, through the, the theater-based program, uh, this is because culture cannot uh, be changed ex except through, th through this uh, intervention of education for the future uh, generations. So we are going to implement this anti celebrity shooting culture inside the children who are mostly uh, from these tribes, from these uh, communities who are shooting and who are even affected by the, the stay bullets. And then these uh, children are uh, giving this uh, theater uh, to their parents, to their uh, teachers, education board uh, in the school, and uh, to their peers, even uh, grade seven, eight, nine, and uh, to the whole uh, school and uh, community. So these children, who whom we are uh, trying to implement this um, innovation and this uh, community sense in them through our introductory uh, session, will grow and will 
uh, say to the community, why I'm, why I'm shooting? Why am I uh, uh, causing damage to my community? I am the victim and I am the criminal as well. Thank you. Now the alarm team. Uh, do you think that what you proposed in your project could be really adapted to other countries and in what ways? Absolutely. Climate change is not only affecting North Africa, it's a global trend and we've seen how in the statistics how it will double and triple in the upcoming years. Now, it is true that our pilot is mainly focused on North Africa, but we made sure it's also scalable and it can also be applied in any other region. For example, um, I am sure that it, we can have volunteers in every single country because people are actually affected by climate crisis. It is not something that's very far from us. Belakis. It is something that's very close to us and that we are going to face more and more in the future. So yes, I believe we are able to expand and we de designed our project with the help of CCACS in a way that it, it can expand in so many countries. And we are actually willing to create national chapters in every single country. And these national centers will serve in a self-leadership way. It is true that they will be related to alarm, but they will be able to manage their own resources. They will be able to receive their own donations. So yeah, this is how we're willing to expand. I'm always optimistic. And what makes me optimistic are the youth. You are our future leaders. Best of luck. Thank you so much. Thank you.